Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're back with part 9. Okay, on physical geography. Okay, we're going to be covering, uh, covering physical weathering today. Okay, so physical weathering, as you, a lot of you may know, okay, is a very important prerequisite okay, to things like your cast and your aerial landscape. Okay, so you need to know basically the processes as well as the different types okay, of physical weathering that can take place. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, first, what's the definition of physical weathering? Okay, I'm just going to cover this very briefly. Okay, the definition of... of oops, sorry, my bad. Okay, the definition of physical weathering okay, is very simply um, the, the disintegration of rocks and minerals. Okay, so you're looking at your physical structure of a rock and not, okay, not your chemical composition. Okay, chemical composition is where chemical weathering will take place. Okay, I'll go through that in the next part of this um, of the next video. Okay, so what actually happens is that physical weathering, okay, what it does okay, is it clears up more surface area. Here, by chemical weathering can then exploit and then operate on. Okay, and it tends to be more prevalent in cold and dry regions. Okay, so just take note of where it tends to take place in, okay? This is usually what is required for it to be favorable. Okay, so there's four main types of physical weathering in your syllabus you need to know. Okay, you have got frost weathering, you have got salt weathering, you have got pressure release. Okay, and lastly, thermal weathering. Oopsie, thermal weathering. Okay. Firstly, what is frost weathering? Okay, frost weathering, okay, you need to know, is basically a, a, a case of block disintegration. Okay, you're basically breaking down blocks. Okay, it comprises of three main processes. You have got freeze thaw action, frost wedging, and frost shattering. Okay, ice crystallization is basically a kind of like an end product of it all. Okay, so the conditions that are required, okay, is that you require existing joints, as well as daily, okay, or seasonal for, uh, freeze thaw cycle. So, Basically, areas with huge diurnal um, temperature and rainfall. Okay, for example, your deserts. This will make it very, very favorable for frost weathering to take place. Okay, so how it works, okay, is that it goes step by step. Okay, firstly, you have got freeze thaw, followed by frost wedging, and lastly, frost shattering. Okay, but these all drive at a very, very same, not same, very, very similar um, case. Okay, whereby firstly, you have got like an existing joint. What happens, okay, is that water starts to fill up. So water fills up inside. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, it fills up inside. And when water fills up, okay, what actually happens is that um, this will actually start to uh, result in, in a case whereby... Uh, give me a second. This off this. Okay, so what actually happens is that this would then cause um, a lot of the, the water to, to freeze. And then when it comes to um, a hot weather again, then the water will melt okay and so repeated action of this okay, is actually what will result in um your freeze thaw action to actually take place okay so as stated over here okay repeated expansion will actually cause the strength of rock to weaken hence this will cause it to cause the rock to actually break down instead okay next you have got salt weathering salt weathering is quite similar okay except that salt weathering okay um basically requires salt crystals to be left behind. Okay, so salt weathering okay, takes place in hot arid regions with high rates of evaporation, similar, okay, it's also in deserts, okay, whereby rainwater that is percolating through a rock, okay, rainwater, okay, oops, sorry, it actually carries um, a lot of minerals in it as well. Okay, so this rainwater that is percolating through a rock, okay, will contain a lot of um, salt minerals, okay, these salt min minerals, okay, when left behind due to the high rates of evaporation, Okay, will leave salt crystals which grow. So when they when these salt crystals grow, okay, they create a lot of stress on the rock, and this would cause um, this idea of granular disintegration. Okay, so as a result, you're gonna have large boulders um, as a result of salt weathering that is left behind. Okay, pressure release. What is pressure release? Okay, pressure release is also quite simple. Okay, pressure release is essentially um, um, a case of exfoliation. Okay, by dilation and exfoliation actually takes place. Okay, and basically what this is, is basically your layers of rock are basically being peeled off from one another. So think of it like a peeling off of like a banana. Okay, you're just peeling off the rocks in layers. Okay, and so as a result, pressure is being released. Okay, and hence this will cause a lot of um, stress to the rock and this will cause it to break down. Okay, um, usually this tends to occur as a, as a result of erosion. Okay, when erosion occurs, the for the the rocks is actually um, um exposed, right? Um, and so the inner rocks and outer outer layers will start to peel off as a result. Okay, thermal weathering, okay, as the name suggests, okay, thermal, okay, is actually heat. 
Okay, so this is basically heat weathering. Okay, what actually happens is that there's okay similarly conditions required is large diurnal temperatures. Okay, so places such as the deserts whereby there's extremely high temperature in the morning and uh, extremely low temperatures at night. Okay, what happens is that the rock okay will actually um start to weaken. Okay, because the outer layers actually expand faster than the inner layers. Okay, due to the heat that's outside. Okay, so when there's this um case of uneven contraction and expansion, okay, it creates a lot of stress on the rock. So when it creates a lot of stress on the rock, the rock starts to peel off as well. Okay, and this results in this thing called granular disintegration. Okay, so you notice I mentioned things like granular, dis granular disintegration, block disintegration. You just need to understand that these okay, are essentially um, processes that you need to, it's basically more technical terms okay, that you should be using when explaining um, your weathering processes. Okay. So just a little note, okay, to take note, okay, that physical weathering tends to take place before chemical weathering can take place, okay, because when physical weathering takes place, okay, it actually creates a lot of cracks, a lot of joints, a lot of fissures, right? And so this allows chemical weathering, okay, the chemicals that fall into these joints, okay, to do their work, okay, and it allows it to explode, uh, not explode, sorry, exploit, okay, on these cracks that physical weathering has caused. Hence, they both work in um, conjunction thereafter, okay? So now we move on to your exam requirements. Okay, basically your exam requirements, you just need to understand okay the various physical weathering processes. Okay, so what are the different types? Okay, after which you just need to know okay that um, um these are basically prerequisites to your cast and aeolian uh, landscape questions. Okay, you need these processes to explain why certain things happen in cast and certain aeolian um processes or or for or, or landforms can actually occur. Okay, so just take note that it tends to come out as a 12 mark question. Okay, whereby um, it'll ask you to explain with chemical weathering processes, okay, the different types of chemical weathering. Um, if it does come out as an essay question, if not, usually you just need to use it to substantiate your explanation, okay, for your CAS and your Aeolian based um, essay questions. Okay, so if not, if you um, like this video, okay, do give it a like, okay, and then let me know as well in the comments, and do subscribe. Okay, so that um, you can stay tuned to the next few videos that I'll be uploading. Okay, next one should be chemical weathering. Okay, followed by either another human job. Okay, um, video, um, which you can check out my playlist. If not, you can also wait for our next cast videos to come out. Okay, I think that one would be um something that a lot of you may, may need. Okay, so we'll go through cast and we'll go through alien soon in the next few videos to come. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next few videos that will be coming up. Okay, if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.